it's Shannon, so I wanted to come at you really quick with a art haul and a little mini review. What? So excited. So I'm gonna get a couple of house cleaning things out of the way. I need my glasses on because I really want to see you today and I'm having problems otherwise not being able to see without the glasses. So they'll be here for a little while. And the lighting just keeps going in and out. Like it's sunny and then it's not and it's cloudy and so I don't know, it can't make its mind up. So lighting has been an issue and probably will be an issue throughout this video. So kind of prepare yourself, that's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, house cleaning out of the way, haul on. All right, so I recently went to Fargo and in North Dakota, this is upside down, and I went to an art supply store. Of course I did, called Art Materials and they are apparently having, they are having a back to school sale. Always good. I did not quite realize that at the time, but I did check online before I went to Fargo because I am kind of weird like that. When I go to new places, I like to see do they have like certain stores that I want to go to. And they did indeed have an art supply store. So I was pretty excited to check it out. And I went there with one specific purpose in mind on on specifically what I wanted to buy but then I figured I'll just wander around and as long as I'm within my budget of X amount then I'm okay and I did good I stuck within my budget so I got this was the reason I went there this is the Molito graphics art masking liquid pump marker <laughs> yeah it's a mouthful so but the really cool thing is is that it is colored masking fluid in here in a pump marker and I really love my acrylic markers you know that which is basically Malto makes a few of those I have a few I've done I think I've used a few in videos before maybe maybe not or at least reviews so I was really excited when I saw they had a masking fluid marker and I was like <gasps> why didn't no one ever think of this before it's a brilliant idea so it's kind of one of those things that I was like I kind of wish I had thought of that because I was like oh that's a good idea and it's colored so it's light blue so the nice thing is is when you put it on your paper you can actually see it when you're done because I might have had that happen before <laughs> where it's clear and I'm like where'd it go I don't know where it's at I am I the only one that's had that happen before I hope not I doubt I am so the next thing I got was a Niji roll and I've heard of these. I've heard some YouTubers and other people in the art community love these. I got this because I was talking to one of the guys that work there and I was telling him, you know, I travel for work and I'm just on the road right now. And well, I wasn't on the road for work. That was my day off. But I was like, I really, you know, he's like, well, do you take your art supplies with you? And I'm like, oh yeah, of course. And he's like, well, do you take like pens or pencils or whatever? And I was like, well, yeah, I take watercolor pencils, I take water brush, I take brush pens, I take, you know, these little .8A pens. I, was like, I take, I take the everything but the kitchen sink just about when I travel. And he's like, well, he's like, do you have one of these? And I was like, no, what is that? And he's like, well, it's a Niji roll. And he's like, you can have up to, it'll hold up to like 36, like pens and pencils and stuff. And I was like, oh <gasps> how much is it and he's like like five bucks and I was like oh sign me up for that so I really like this because I can hold a lot of things and I'm gonna be honest my current travel bag of like art supplies might be a lot of Ziploc bags which I mean I keep my watercolor pencils in their original 10 but you throw that in and then you throw in like the three Ziploc bags of like pencils and pens and markers I was like it gets pretty bulky so I'm hoping this will help me to pare it down or at least get rid of a Ziploc bag or two which I'm pretty sure it will so looking forward to that and at the price it was not bad oh and I don't know if I said but I think this marker was right around 10 50 or 11 dollars and if you hear a lot of noise in the background I apologize I am doing dishes and laundry it's you know weekend stuff that you need to get done the next thing I bought are some more of these .88 Stabilo pens. I really love these so much. They're so fun to play with. And I use them and take them on the road with me and doodle in my little sketchbook art journal slash scrapbooking thing. My, my little like book, my little sketchbook thing. 
So I really like these and we're going into fall. So like three out of the five colors are very fall and then I'm clearly wishing it was still, that summer would stay as long as possible. I got five, I got the purple one is in the color uh, number 55, just so you know, they don't print colors on them. They do print numbers. You can Google what the number is online. Number 54, I honestly thought this, I've been really into like, I want to paint pumpkins. Don't ask, it's cause we're going into fall and I just feel like pumpkin. And again, this also would be like a highlight on a pumpkin. Number 44, it's a very dark, very like natural colored yellow. I love it. I'm so excited. I've so played with these already, you know that. Number 53, which is dark green. I had, I have one of these in the other kind. And then number 13, which is this beautiful teal color. And I just love how fine these tips are. They are so fun. These are fairly inexpensive. I think I paid 95 cents there. I paid 95 cents at Cold Snow, Creative Cold Snow in Des Moines. So fairly reasonably priced pens. If you're looking to get into that and have a little fun. The next thing I got was a couple of the Richeson Semi Hard Pastels, which I actually already have some Richeson Semi Hard Pastels. I got like a play sample set, and I really, really like those. Those are one of the things I really like out of that. I like those, and I like their hand rolled pastels. And uh, they're, but they're, I don't know, their other ones are kind of, I, they're okay. So I really like these, and these were $1.60 a piece. So, and they are square and the number is stamped into them. I don't know if you can see that or not. They kind of remind me of a Conte crayon. I really want to do a, like a do-off, like a, like a do-off, like a do-off. Yeah. Like a comparison review to the two of them because like the shape is similar. The use for it is pretty similar. They're not exactly the same. They are different. I will say these are more chalky than a Conte. A Conte is a little creamier, a little smoother, but I mean, it's $1.60. That's not really bad, open stock. And then I got three different colors. I got one is the color, and again, these are all gonna be numbers. So this is 62, I got 54, and then I got 225. And again, I was inspired by fall and pumpkins. And also I will say, um, at Art Materials, if it is a broken one and they already have it bagged, it's like an extra 25% off. And I, honestly, with these, I end up breaking these anyways. These are so freaking brittle. I I, I can break these with like pff, blow on. I, it's a miracle those didn't break right there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I really do like these. They are fun to play with. I like these to do like background colors that I don't necessarily want to move a whole lot. Um, there are a lot, these are just fun. They're fun to play with. Pastels are fun to play with. The next thing I got is from Sakura. Woo, look, I think I got that right, maybe if, fingers crossed. These are oil pastels. I was, I'm on a pastel kick lately. Uh, this is the Crepa Specialist. So these are the artist professional grade version versus the expressionist, which are a lot of fun, only about 70 cents a piece, and are okay if I put in my Ziploc bag and take them with me and they get mushed a little. It's all right. These are $1.99 a piece open stock there. I didn't think that was too bad, and they do have little pads of paper so I could play with them. I really like them. Super creamy, so, so fun. So these are the Cray Pass Specialists. Oh, and these have light fast ratings versus those I don't believe do. They're super smooth. The pigment load in this is stupid crazy. It, these are fun, fun, fun. That's all I can tell you. And I do like that they do have the light fast ratings on them. I know I've said that three times, but it does make a difference to some people, particularly those that are trying to sell their original pieces rather than just photos or prints. I'm sorry, Prince. So the next thing I got, y'all, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you now, I'm pre-warning you, I'm gonna buy more of these because I really, really, really like them. So I really like pastels, let's just be honest. But finding a nice, smooth, creamy pastel that I can use, I mean, it's difficult. Like the first set I bought, the Mungyo is okay, but it's very chalky, very chalky, and not 
it's not half as pigmented as these that I bought. So these are by Richeson as well, which amazes me because I'm going to be honest, like Richeson, their art products are either hits or misses for most people. They're either amazing or they're stinkers. Sorry, Richeson. That's just how I feel about it. Now I will say, clearly I like some things because I really like your semi-hard pastels. I really like the hand-rolled pastels. They're beautiful. And I freaking love these. So I've been thinking of purchasing some of the street sticks. Ooh, are we in the viewfinder? There we go. The street sticks, which are made actually to be used outdoors. So like on sidewalk art or on brick buildings on the sides of things. So they're made to do that. However, they also are light fast rated and the pigment load in these, y'all is stupid amazing like amazing amazing i really love these these to me are kind of the crown jewel of the richeson pastels that i've tried so far i think i've tried almost all of them there's a couple other like oddballs that i want to try that i haven't but i like these so much don't stop making them these are 4.95 a piece and you might think that's a lot of money for a pastel. I'm going to tell you, no, it's not. Because I would pay $4.95 or more for a Sennelier or Rembrandt or any of those. I mean, you'd pay, or Schmincke, or Uni Unison. It was, they had Unison pastels there, the hand-rolled $7.95. So $4.95, you get a big, fat, chubby little stick. I really like the big, chubby stick. A few months ago, I was able to participate in a sidewalk chalk event art contest with a friend and a whole bunch of people in Rapid City and it was really cool I actually did pretty well and they gave us Crayola to play with which you know Crayola sidewalk chuck it's okay it's not super pigmented but there were some people there that have brought their own and the winner had actually brought this the street sticks and the painting he did was super cool and these are made to to last pretty good but you can wash them off also, they're non-toxic, so if that is an issue for you, and to be honest with pastel artists, it should be, a, I kind of almost feel like it should be a bigger issue with them than it is because they should either be wearing masks because of the dust particles alone, because it is a very dusty medium, but it's, it's one of those things. I really like that these are non-toxic person, personally. I'm not a pastel artist per se, I'm more of a mixed media, but I like that. And I love the size. I like that they're big. I like that they're smooth and that it's so, this is the super creamy, super pigment loaded. I just like this. I can't, I can't tell you. So I went and I bought what I thought at the time was a red, a blue, a yellow. I went to lunch and I played with it. Again, it was non-toxic. I feel fairly safe. Even if I ate a little while I was eating my Wiener Schnitzel, it was fine. So, <laughs> I bought the um, 142 red, the 031 green, and the 072 yellow, and I had such a blast. I was like, I gotta go back and get another couple. And I was like, I'll get a green and a purple. That'll round out secondaries. I didn't realize this was a green until I looked when I got home, because I just looked at it and thought, you know, it looks kind of blue. So I got 061 purple, I got 021 green, 072 yellow, Z uh, 142 red, 072 green or 031 green so keep in mind the actual actual names are basically numbers followed by green yellow red purple blue whatever so i'm okay with that but it's it is something to note because some people don't don't like or don't enjoy that and then last but not least i was really excited because they were having their back to school sale and so they had the windsor and newton gouache on sale and I have heard really good things about the Windsor and Newton gouache and it tends to be really readily available compared to some other gouache brands which I really do want to try too but these were 30% off and so I was like well if I stick within series one or two then I can you know play with these and get some really cool stuff so I got primary blue and then I got uh, spectrum violet and then this is not uh, 
This is not Winsor Newton. This is M. Graham and Company. This is Alizarin Crimson. This was not on sale. The reason I got this, even though it wasn't on sale, and I'm not going to lie, M. Graham and Company is more expensive than Winsor & Newton, even when it's not on sale, is because this is made with gum arabic and honey and i know personally for what i like to play with and the things and the consistency i like i really enjoy watercolor that has honey in it i really like schminky i really like daniel smith i really like uh sennelier and they're all formulated with honey all of them have slightly different varietals of honey which also make a difference in the chemical formulation the makeup of it we're not gonna i'm not gonna nerd out on you i promise or try not to but so I really wanted to try one of the M. Graham and companies to see how I like it because unfortunately like with gouache they don't have a whole lot of starter sets and they don't have the dot samplers which are becoming more more prevalent in watercolor. I hope gouache eventually catches up and does something similar although just because someone makes watercolor does not mean they make gouache obviously but I really wanted to try them because in general I really like watercolor with with honey in it because it's got a luminous quality to it it just adds a little extra oomph to it when it's on that paper and it's dry it's I don't know I just really love honey in my watercolor it does add that that luminous factor and it just it really takes it to me it takes it up a level I love I love the way it looks it's beautiful so, anyways that is all for this haul slash mini review and hopefully it was not too terribly long anyways i hope you enjoyed that do me a huge favor like and subscribe and i'll talk to you later